to today's lecture. Myself, Assistant Professor Tukur Gupta from Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghazabad. The lecture series that I am covering is for the subject embedded system with the subject code KOE062. Today, the lecture that I am covering is modeling of EDLC. EDLC is embedded product development life cycle. Whenever we develop any embedded system application product, so it goes through the various phases. So, in EDLC, we study the various life cycle phases that a product goes through during the starting up to the end of the product finalization. In modeling, whenever the, there are the various models that a product can use, the product development can use. It depends upon the requirement application of the product, it requires depends upon the demand of the product, it depends upon the uh, deployment environment of the product that we select certain model for developing the product. So, let us see what are these and we have to note that in any of the models that we are studying, the phases that a product will go through are the same. So, whether it is any of the these four models that I am going to discuss in this lecture, the product will go through all those phases that I have already discussed in my previous lecture. That is a need phase, conceptualization, analysis, design, development, testing, deployment and then the customer support and then retirement or disposal. So, all these phases are the part of any of these model that I am going to discuss. So, basically there are four types of models available under EDLC. This is waterfall or linear model, iterative or incremental or we can say fountain model. Next is the prototyping model and last is the spiral model. First model is waterfall model that is a very basic model. We always also call it as a linear model because as you can see in this figure, this is a waterfall model. All the phases, this is, these are all the phases need conceptualization, analysis, the design, development and testing, deployment, support, upgrades, retirement. All these phases are placed back to back one phase after another, just like a linear model or we can say just like a waterfall. So, we can you can see it as a waterfall model. So, in the need phase the statement of the need is defined during the conceptualization the whole concept of the system boundary that is a cost benefit analysis report all these are determined in this phase. In analysis all types of requirements functional, non-functional all these requirements are gathered. In the design phase preliminary and the detailed designs are finalized are documented. In the testing and the deploy development phase the product is actually developed according to the design already discussed and the testing is performed. The testings has, are all also different, uh, different uh, types like unit testing is there, integration testing is there module testing is there, user, uh, user testing is there. So, all these testings are a part of this phase. In the deployment, the product is actually launched in the field, in the user field. In the support, the maintenance and the bug, bugs are fixed and the maintenance is provided for the product. Whatever the uh, loopholes are visualized in the product after the being deployed, all these are studied and are upgraded. So, finally, the product is upgraded according to the bugs and the maintenance issues that, that have been obtained from the support phase and after that the retirement comes. So, after all these phases, the final phase is retirement that the product at certain point of time, the product may get obsolete and gets out of the market. So, all these phases are a part of this waterfall model, but they are placed linearly one phase after another. 
So, the this is the one adopted in most of the olden times due to the complexity of the various products the model needs to be changed. So, as we can see that this waterfall or the linear model is the basic one, it is a much simpler one. So, it cannot be used in the complex embedded applications. So, obviously, the model needs to needs to get changed. So, in this approach when you are talking about this approach linear approach, each phase is executed in sequence. So, when, when the the next phase comes only after the completion of the previous phase. So, we can say that execution flow is unidirectional, output of one phase serves as the input of the next phase. So, we can see that after the concept, concept the, fun, uh, all the concept of the product is finalized, then only the analysis is performed, both these things cannot go side by side. The all the activities involved in each phase are well planned, so that what should be done in the next phase and how it has, it has to be done all these are pre planned. The feedback of each phase is available only after they are executed. So, this is very important point implements the extensive review systems to ensure the process flow is going in the right direction. So, an extensive review system has to be implemented in these cases, because if this is not done, if the review has is not done at each step, then the if any correction has to be made in any of this step that is not possible, because the correction is made in any of the phase only when the final product is obtained, it cannot be, it cannot be done in between. So, this is the so we can say a drawback of this system. Even if we identify the bugs in the current design, the development process proceeds with the design. Fixes for the bug are postponed till the support phase. So, this is how this model works. So, this is the drawback of this model. So, before discussing the drawbacks, let us see what are the strengths of this model. It is easy to understand and implement as you can see it is a linear model. So, it is very easy to implement widely used and known define before design and design before coding. So, this is the concept of this model that before designing the idea has to be defined and before the coding the design has to be finalized. Being a linear model it is very simple to implement works well on the mature products and provides a structure to inexperienced teams. So, this is very good model we can say for inexperienced teams, because this is the simplest model. It minimizes the planning over overhead, phases are processed and completed one at a time. So, this is again very important that in this the all the phases are completed one at a time not simultaneously. Now, we discuss the weaknesses of this model, all the requirements must be known upfront, inflexible model, because if any of the correction has to be made in any of the phase that is not possible until the support phase. Backing up to solve mistakes is difficult. So, once an application is in the testing stage, it is very difficult to go back and change something that was not well thought in the concept stage. So, at each and every phase the verification the validation has is very important that has to be made compulsorily. Client may not be clear about what they want and what is needed, because as the product development goes on during its middle phases sometimes we feel that the concept needs to be changed, but that is not possible in this model. So, this has to be clarified, so that is why the concept has to be finalized much prior otherwise nothing can be changed in between. Customers may have little opportunity to review, preview the system until it may be too late. It is not pre preferred model for complex and object oriented projects and high amount of risk and uncertainty is there in this model. Since the bugs cannot be uh, change uh, cannot be corrected even if they get identified in between that is why the risk is very high in such models. When to use 
when the quality is more important than the cost or the schedule. Why? Because the, in this model, since the risk management is not good in this model, model so the everything is very is rigorously uh, we can say it is rigorously verified at each phase. So, the quality is good, the quality of the product attained obtained from this model is very good. So, this model is used whenever the quality is of much more importance than the schedule of the product or the cost of the product. When the requirements are very well known, the clear or the fixed. So, this model should be used only when we are very much clear with our requirements, with our needs, with the concepts. The new version of existing product is needed, this can be used because uh, the upgradation of the product is a simpler one and this model can be used in that case. Porting an existing product to the new platform, this model can be used because this is a simpler, a simple activity, it is the some simple process. Next model we are talking about is iterative or incremental or fountain models. So, iterative and incremental development is the heart of the cyclic software development process developed in response to the weaknesses of waterfall model. So, what were the weakness of the waterfall model? That if we come across any of the loophole in between, we cannot change it, we cannot go back and change it. So, we have to use some other method for overcome to overcome that problem. So, iterative or the incremental model is the answer to that. It is a repetitive process in which the waterfall model is repeated over and over to correct the ambiguities observed in each iteration. So, let us see how it works. Suppose we start with the start, then we understand the need of the product development, then we finalize the concept of that particular product. Now, we come to the analysis part. So, after analysis part, this here the design has to be finalized. After that, the development that or the testing of the product is done. After this development and testing deployment is done. And as in the previous model, like in this previous model, after the deployment, the support was provided and then the upgradation. But in this model, what is happening is after the deployment, again the analysis is performed. Instead of going to the support phase, again the analysis is performed. What analysis? That all the functionalities and the non-functional issues have to be considered in this phase. And if any improvement needs to be done, then again the design is changed, the design issues are addressed again. So, in this way, this these four phases are there in the cyclic manner, like analysis, design, development, testing and deployment, all these run in the cyclic manner. And when there is no issue with the problem with the product, then only we go to the completed stage. So, this is how the iterative or the function uh, incremental model come uh, does the job. The core set of all the functions for each group is identified in the first cycle, then it, it is then built, deployed and released. This release is called the first release. Bug fixes and modification for the first cycle is carried out in the second cycle. So, this is how the particular product is goes through the reanalysis again and again and this is how a better and better product is obtained after certain number of cycles and we get the final product in the end. Process is repeated until all the functionalities are implemented meeting the requirements. So, this is how this product is beneficial because in between if we get to know that this the, uh, the, there are certain issues with the functionalities of the product, the, those can be addressed in between and the upgradations can be made or the changes can be made to the product. So, what are the advantages that the good development cycle feedback at each function or feature implementation. 
So, each of the function and the features can be analyzed in detail and can be upgraded, can be corrected in the next stage. Data can be used as a reference for similar product development in future. More responsiveness to changing the user needs. So, this is what is very important that it can, it is very easy to address the user needs using this model. Because whenever the demand comes from the users for certain changes in the product, then it can be addressed easily and it can be implemented. It provides working product model with at least minimum features at the first cycle. So, this is how this product works that it provides the minimum functionalities at the first cycle and those functionalities are analyzed. Some changes that have to be made these are addressed and these are implemented in the second cycle. And these such cycles goes on until the finally, corrected product which adhere to the timelines which adhere to the requirements these come up and we get the final product. When we talk about the advantages, so there are few more advantages with this model that is a minimized risk, project management and testing is much simpler compared to the linear model. Product development can be stopped at any state with a bare minimum working product. So, these are certain advantages of this model, because in this, in this model the functionalities can be addressed, the requirements can be addressed, need can be addressed at any stage, at any time. So, the risk minimization obviously gets attained. The project management and testing is very simpler because it is easy to test the functionalities in between. Product development can be stopped at any stage because the analysis can be performed at any time. And so, if it does not meet the requirement, the product development can be stopped. So, this is how this uh, model is very efficient. When we talk about the disadvantages, the extensive review requirement is there at each cycle, impact on operations due to the new releases. This is again a drawback of this model, because due to the uh, analysis of the requirements, due to the loopholes obtained in that requirements and uh, due to the newer upgradations in the product, again the operations gets impacted. The training requirements for each new deployment, uh, deployment at the end of each development cycle. So, this is very important when the changes are made in the product. So, that is uh, the manpower needs to be trained for that, this is very important. A structured and well documented interface definition across the modules to accommodate the changes. This is very important when we want to accommodate the changes then the structured and well documented interface needs to be understood, needs to be developed. So, that we, uh, we can give a good final product which according to the requirement, according to the user requirement. Uh, when to use? A need to get a basic functionality to the market early, we can use this model, because this model in the initial stage gives a very bare uh, gives a model, gives a product with the bare minimum functionalities. So, it is if we want to produce a product early in the market, we can use this model, because using this model we can produce a product in the market with the bare, bare minimum fun functionalities. On projects which have the lengthy development schedules, this can be used. On the project with new technology allowing the user to adjust the system in small incremental steps rather than leaping into a major new project. So, in, the, in that case also the model can be used because using this model we can use the repetitive cycles for upgrading the product, for making the changes to the product. So, this can be used in the, those uh, in that tech, uh, projects where the it is not necessary to leap into a major new project, but small incremental upgradations are acceptable. 
when it is highly risky to develop the whole system at once. So, in certain cases in the critical applications, it is very risky that the whole system gets developed at once. So, in that case this model is very beneficial, because this model uh, do the analysis in, in the cycles and gives a final product after certain requirement and analysis and gives a better product at the end. When we talk about the prototyping model, prototyping model follows requirement definition, prototype development, prototype evaluation and requirements refining. So, this is how the prototype model looks like, they all these phases are placed back to back in the loop. So, what is the significance of this loop? So, this model is similar to the iterative model and the product is developed in multiple cycles. So, this, this is a very similar model to the previous that we have studied. The only difference is that the prototyping model produces a refined prototype of the product at the end of each cycle, instead of just the addition of the bare functionality or the feature to the existing product. So, this is the difference in the uh, iterative model uh, which we just studied what, what was happening that after each cycle some functionality was added to the product, but in this model apart from adding the functionality the prototype is also developed for the model and that is deployed in the customer field and it is then analyzed. So, this is the difference. So, there would not be any commercial deployment of the prototype of the product at each cycle and the shortcomings of the prototype model after each cycle are evaluated and it is fixed in the next cycle. After the initial requirement analysis the design for the first prototype is made the deployment development processes started. On finishing the prototype it is sent to the customer for evaluation. The customer evaluates the product for the set of requirements and gives his or her feedback to the developer in terms of shortcomings and improvements needed. So, this is a very beautiful model we can see, because after each cycle a prototype of the product is provided to the customer and depending upon that feedback which is obtained from the customer side the changes are implemented in that product. So, since the product is provided to the user to the customer after each cycle, so its loopholes it is very easy to find its loopholes, it is very easy to understand the shortcomings in the product and it is therefore, it gives a much better product at the end. So, this is the difference between this and the previous model. The developer refines the product according to the customer's expe exact expectations and repeats the pro prototype development process. So, since the changes are made according to the customer's exact expectation that is why we get a much better product at the end. After a finite number of iterations the final product is delivered to the customer and launches in the market or operational environment. So, only after the all the uh, requirements of the customer are fulfilled, then only the final product is deployed in the consumer market. In this approach the product undergoes significant evolution as a result of period periodic shuttling of the product information between the customer and the developer. So, this is how we get a much product much better product using this model. Now, when we talk about the spiral model, it was developed by Barry Boehm in 1988 it combines the concept of linear model and iterative nature of the prototyping model. So, this is how a spiral looks like. So, this is spiral can be visualized as the uh, combination of four phases that is the requirements analysis, design and implementation. So, this is a simple spiral model. So, when we talk about the prototype Mod, prototype model and the linear model. So, in the prototype model what we are doing after each cycle some pro prototype of the product is uh, obtained and it is sent to the uh, user uh, user end 
and it is then analyzed by the user and from the feedback obtained from the user side some changes have to be implemented in the product before the final product goes into the market. So, this is what the prototype model talks. When we talk about the linear model, the spiral model contains the concept of linear model also that is why these steps are mandatory in that that is a requirement analysis design and implementation. Now, when we talk about the spiral model advantages, so there is a high amount of risk analysis hence avoidance of risk is enhanced. Good for large and mission critical projects, strong approval and documentation control, additional functionality can be added at a later date and soft, software is produced early in the software life cycle. So, these are certain examples of spiral model. Since it includes all the steps of the linear model as well as the it is having the iterative nature of looking into the model. So, that is why this is very beneficial. Disadvantages includes it can be costly model to use, risk analysis requires highly specific expertise, projects success is highly depending upon the risk analysis phase does not work well for smaller projects. So, when there are the large projects the complex projects then only this model is used to go through the different phases of the pro project of the product and to uh, focus on the requirement analysis to focus on, on the need of the product the conceptualization again and again during each cycle and then only the final good product is obtained. So, that is why the risk is very um, risk minimization is very important in such cases and that is why the spiral model is used and it does not work for the smaller projects. When to use the spiral model? When the cost and the risk evaluation is important for medium to high risk projects, long term project commitment unwise because of the potential changes to economic priorities. So, this, this may be the case users are unsure of their needs then this can be used because when the users are initially unsure of the needs and at the later stages when we are going through the different cycles of the product development in this spiral model those needs can be reevaluated can be rethought and, the, and then the actual needs can be changed at the later stages and the final product can be obtained requirements are complex new pro product line significant changes are expected that is the research and exploration. So, a spiral model is a very good example of research and exploration. So, after each cycle much more research and exp, uh, research, research is done on the product on the product concept need demand of the market and all. So, the significant changes can be implemented after such much uh, so much of rigorous research. So, this is possible in the spiral model only. So, these were all the models of uh, the EDLC that is the waterfall model we talked about. Then there was the prototype model, there was the iterative model that is also known as the fountain model and finally, the spiral model. All these models have their uh, respective importance in different applications in different types of projects whether they are complex, simple, long lasting or the short term projects. So, all these models have their respective importance in different situations, but we have, what we have to note is in, e, in every any of the model the all the phases that are related to any of the product development are all the same. So, all those phases are always a part of all these models. So, that is all uh, from my side on these uh, models of EDLC, thank you.